Good. Okay, so today I'm going to deviate a little bit and show you how I no rinse one of our cars. Um, first thing I do, so I, normally I foam wash our cars, um, but in this case, there's not a lot of dirt, it's just uh, dust on the car. So I'm going to just do a no rinse really quick, show you how that's done. First things first, I start off with the wheels, the wheels and tires, and I use uh, the PNS uh, Brake Buster. It's a really good product. I dilute it five to one. And that's what I have in here. Actually, this is a little bit left over. Um, I already did two, did two of the wheels. So five to one mixture, that's what I put in here. Um, this is a, a foamer, and you can always tell the difference between a foamer and a sprayer. Be real careful when you disseminate the two. The foamer has a little nozzle that's just a little bit different. It's like a little vertical. It's not round. So this will foam. We put air pressure in it. That's what we're gonna do. What I'm also going to show you when we do the rinse, the no rinse, is I hacked, you can get one of these at Harbor Freight for like five bucks, a sprayer. This is what we're going to do with the no rinse. I hacked it by putting a valve stem on it from um, an inner tube, and then I have a portable air compressor, <laughs> so, which is really cool. So I just fill this to 18 PSI and just keep hitting the button to keep filling it up, and that way you don't have to keep pumping. We'll get to that. So first things first, let's pump this up. Okay, we come over here. So I have a few things ready already. I have a rinse, because I'm gonna rinse this. I'm not gonna spray it with a pressure washer. I'm gonna just do all of this in the garage. It's really late at night here. Don't wanna bother my neighbors. Um, and then I use a mitt. I don't use the brushes because these wheels aren't that deep and the mitt gets in really, really nice through the wheels and then the tire brush. So first things first, let's foam this up. And we'll let that sit for a little bit. While we do that, we'll get the front one. I only do two wheels and tires at a time. I don't do all four. I don't foam all four at the same time. The nice thing about the PNS uh, brake buster is that you just leave it there for a, a minute or two. And the nice thing is that it just really wipes away, not only does it wipe away the brake dust, but it also has non-corrosive properties that uh, help your, your uh, the disc brake stay clean as well. I also don't use a stool like some folks might. I prefer to use knee pads. Got these from Harbor Freight on sale for like two bucks. <laughs> so they work wonders. So just get on my knees and just clean the tire a bit. Do the other one. Okay, I don't have to do it too too deep because I do this often, so they're not that dirty. This is nothing but cold water that I, I use as a rinse. Okay. If I had a lot of brake dust that was caked onto this, I'd probably use an iron remover on it. I'll leave a link to that, um, what that iron remover I use is, but it's real rare that I have that much cake, uh, that much brake dust caked on because I do clean these often, so. So now I get my rinse and I get my, my mitt. I have a mitt, this is just for the wheels and tires. So I rinse it. Okay, and then. I just go in through all the crevices. Like I said, these wheels don't go deep. So this mitt actually captures the entire wheel even behind the brake drum. It's small enough to where it fits right behind the brake drum as well. Okay. You can see the mitt comes out nice and clean with the rinse.
Okay, I don't worry too much about scratches per se on these chrome wheels, um, like I do like on the C8 Corvette. Um, they're pretty forgiving. So once I have that all rinsed off and everything, I have a dedicated fiber cloth that's really soft just for the wheels. That's why they're red. I know the red ones are just for wheels. And when I wash these fiber cloths, I wash the wheel cloths separate from the car cloths. And this absorbs really nice. I could use a little brush to get underneath the bolts here, but actually this cloth fits in there just fine. Unlike the C8 that I have, I do use a brush because the inside of the bolts are really hard to get to. Okay, and you can tell that that brake buster did a really nice job of getting a lot of the stuff off. The wheel's nice and clean, and you can see my fiber cloth is really nice and clean as well. So the mitt took most all of the, the brake dust off on its own, and that just left me to do nothing more than rinse it. Okay, so let's do the front one here. You can see the dirt that it came off. And like I said, I do this every couple of weeks, so there's not that much dirt that piles up. So it's pretty easy to clean. Now, normally I would spray this with a pressure washer to rinse it off. But again, I'm not gonna use the pressure washer. I want to show you that this can be done in your garage without disturbing anybody. And we'll do a pressure washing and a foam next time. And show you how I deep clean the cars a little bit more. Okay, you can see the dirt, the black that's on the mitt. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but it's really nice. The brake buster stuff has some hydrophobic properties that let the dirt just kind of fall right off. So, okay. All right, so that is how fast you can do your wheels if you have a good product. Clean as a whistle. So do the other two, won't bore you with that. You've already seen how I do the wheels and tires. We could put a dressing on it. I'll show you what I use. Um, so let's get to the no rinse car wash. So on the Chevelle, I'm really careful when I foam and rinse I, with the pressure washer because these older cars don't have very good drainage. So I actually prefer to do the no rinse on them and I only really do the foam and pressure washing rinse on the Chevelle when it's absolutely necessary and I haven't gotten to it for a while. So I'm using O&R, four gallons of water to four caps and I'm gonna use this little hacked, I have sprayers but i wanted to show you this little hack because i started using this because i thought it was just fun to do so i'm going to first fill this up so i have that solution already in here you don't see a full four gallons in this bucket because i have already done one car so Okay. So 
So here's the air pump. Okay. Okay, so we turn the air pump on and I already have this set to 18 PSI. Okay, so basically it's just gonna keep filling up with air. Every time I run low, I just hit the little button and bring it up. To, I, I have it set for 19.5, but usually I have it set for 18. So um, basically I can just go ahead and spray the O&R on. I usually like to do the front first. See, now it's getting low, it's 13 PSI, so I just hit the button. and I don't have to pump. I'm pretty generous with it, letting the ONR do its work. Now this car, like all my cars, is ceramic coated, so you're gonna see the water just kind of beating off. That didn't sound right. <laughs> you're gonna see the water beating a lot. <laughs> Okay, and I'll do the, the back and the other side separate. So you saw how easy that was, no pumping. Okay. So now that I have that, I kind of just like to go over it with the mitt. Okay. And I know some folks do the bottom first and all that, but this is so fast. The, 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 the reason behind that is to let the water from the top come down and all that stuff. And I like to do the bottom last because it's usually the dirtiest and I don't want to start getting my mitt. It's usually soiled. Okay. So I'm using ONR. I'm not using the two bucket method because um, I, I just don't see quite the benefit of that when most of this dirt is already off and this is very light dust. I can understand using a two bucket method when the car is pretty heavily soiled, but in this case, it's not. And the mitt is just gliding. I haven't tried any of the other products, but I've been using O&R for a very long time and the mitt just glides so easy. I'll do the hood next. And get to the other side. Oh, you could have stayed there.
Okay, this is a convertible. So I'm gonna do the top glass and I'm not gonna drench it. Um, I'm just gonna take a soft cloth to the top because the top is a cloth top. <laughs> All right, to help me dry, I'm gonna be using PNS's bead maker. I'm not diluting it, I'm using it as is. I just do a couple of little sprays. And I'm gonna use one quarter of the towel, of the drying towel on each panel. And if you use the bead maker, you want to leave this sit overnight because it will give it a small layer of protection that'll harden and your car is gonna look really, really shiny in the morning. <laughs> And I'm not pressing the drying towel. I'm just letting the drying towel just glide. And that's what it's doing. It's just gliding. I usually go through two drying towels, one for each side of the car and the hood and one for the other side of the car and the trunk. And again, the towel, you can see it just slides on its own, look at that. No pressure. And it's leaving the car spotless. Okay, so I'm gonna do the other side, won't bore you with that. I'll do the top. Again, the top, I'm not gonna just douse it with no rinse. I'm actually gonna use no rinse in a damp cloth and wipe the top down. So I'm not, that's why I'm not worried about water dripping down um, over everything I've just dried. And uh, yeah, that's really basically it. I won't do, won't cover the interior. Basically with the interior, I just um, dust a lot of stuff off and use um, a nice uh, cleaner. Um, actually, I dilute O&R um, a bunch to use it as cleaner for both the glass and the interior. So um, that'll be for, for another video. So that is how I know rinse a car and you can see how fast it took. I mean, it didn't take any time at all, probably 20 minutes. Um, the other thing that I did is at Harbor Freight, um, I bought a tarp because I have really nice floors, um, raised deck flooring. And while raised deck flooring does have channels for the water to slide under, I don't want the dirt and grime to stick to the cement underneath or anything like that. So you can pick one of these tarp up on sale for like four bucks. Um, and, and you can see, it, it, covers a good span of the car's um, uh, length. So that's, that's another little tip if you wanna keep your garage floor, floor relatively clean. Okay, so I think that'll do it. Hope you got something out of it. If there's something that I'm just doing deftly wrong, feel free to comment, but everybody has their style of how they're washing the cars. I've been doing this for a lot of years. We have about eight cars, um, all show cars. 
um, and all ceramic coated, they don't get scratch. I mean, anything is prone to scratching. You're going to get light scratches no matter what, you know, but um, for the most part, with the clear coating that it has on the ceramic coating and the layer protection that PNS Beadmaker gives me, um, the cars stay pretty darn good for, for a while. And then when it comes time, you know, two, three years down the road, I just ceramic coat it all over again, start over. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, like I always say, live for today because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Peace out.